Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint fireplace besties. We're going to do a fireplace with some cute Christmas socks, some cute Christmas decorations over the fireplace, another highly customizable painting. And I did this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Let's go over brushes and colors. So I will be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. This is a Princeton Velvet Touch brush. A number 12 bright brush. This is a Royal and Langnickel Majestic brush. And a number four round brush. This one is also a Princeton Velvet Touch brush. And we have eight colors in this painting. Um, keep in mind that the socks could be customized. So if you don't want to use red, you can choose a different color for that, for example. So Pyrrol Red, Thalo Blue, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Primary Yellow, Burnt Sienna, Mars Black, and Titanium White. I also used cadmium orange hue. So the colors that are customizable are the ones you see in the socks and the pants. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So 11 by 14 inch canvas and let's place it in the horizontal mode. There is also a tracer template for this if you prefer to use that. We will be drawing uh, without a tracer in this demonstration. The first thing I am doing is I'm placing a horizontal line on the bottom of the canvas. So measure three inches from the bottom. So this line is the floor line. So where that fireplace is situated on that horizontal line. So that would be the floor line. Three inches from the bottom, use a ruler to draw a straight line. And then I'm gonna sketch out a curve in the center. So this is going to be the top curve of the fireplace. And let's, it doesn't have to be perfectly center, so we can just kind of estimate the center of this. I'm gonna do a vertical line. So that vertical line is about three and a half inches, although that doesn't have to be exact. If you want it to be a little off center, you can do it that way. So I did two vertical lines, about three and a half inches from each side of the canvas. And then we can kind of adjust this arc to make it even. Um, and we'll adjust this as we paint it in. We just need a good kind of guideline to start with. And then I'm gonna do, we can do, let's leave it simple because the simpler this is the better, but let's do two more vertical lines going all the way up. We can make sure those are easily evenly spaced apart. Um, you are welcome to change the style of this fireplace if you want it to be like a brick fireplace or cobblestone or something different. You can just keep in mind. So that's like an inch and a half from that first vertical line. Um, but keep in mind there's a lot going on in this painting. So um, the more simple we can keep the background, the easier it's going to be to paint this. So there's our arc. So we have kind of basic layout of our fireplace. I'm gonna do, do another horizontal line um, about an eighth to a quarter inch above the floor line that we made it. So this line actually is gonna go up just a little bit. This line is actually going to be the floor line and the, the line below that is a table line. And in between that, it's gonna just be dark black space. So it's gonna get make it look like it has a little bit of a division between where the table is and where the fireplace is. So this bottom line, that first line we drew is actually the table line. And then the other line that we just drew, like a quarter inch above that is the floor line. And um, you can erase the vertical parts below it, um, but that's just gonna be painted solid black later. So that's, we don't have to, erase that. This is a lot easier with a T-square, so it's kind of easy to make your ruler go slanted, um, like this line here. So this line is actually the kind of base below the fireplace, so the, the like a black metal thing on the bottom of the fireplace. And that one is about three quarter inches, so three quarter inch to a half an inch. I'm just going to kind of adjust these lines. Um, this drawing does not have to be perfect. 
the lines don't have to be perfectly straight. The This fireplace is actually going to be painted kind of loosely. I'm just making these lines darker. So that is the basic framework of what we're going to start with. And let's go ahead and load our palette with black and white. So titanium white and Mars black. And we'll be needing a three quarter inch wash brush and a water cup. Let's load our brush in the water and kind of tap it dry. And we're gonna double load into white and black. So let's grab a big scoop of white and just a little bit of black. So maybe about three parts white to one part black. We want this wall on the far right and the wall on the far left to be darker and the fireplace piece is going to be lighter. So this is dark. If we want, we can actually do like a gradient so it, it's dark towards the left and light towards lighter towards the right. That'll give it kind of an effect that it's casting a shadow on the wall. So up and down strokes, blending this. It's a, a relatively thin layer of paint. So darker and gets a little bit lighter towards the right. And you use the tip of the brush to kind of cut in. Um, if you want, you can use painter's tape for this. Um, but I didn't find painter's tape to be necessary since I'm kind of painting this loosely. So if we get some of this dark inside of the line where that fireplace is, that's okay. We can adjust that later. So up and down strokes, same thing on the far left part of the wall, darker, and then it blends lighter. So I'm just using the full width of the brush to drag. And then for like the sides, like the floor and the sides, you can use the tip of the brush to get that thinner line to help you cut in on your shape. And then I'm going to do the fireplace next. So that one is also gray. So I didn't rinse my brush at all and I'm grabbing just white on my brush. So this should be a light gray color. If it's turning out too dark because you still have too much black on your brush, you can just go ahead and rinse your brush and start over and then load a bunch of white and just a teeny tiny bit of black on your brush. So also up and down strokes. And then our arc is actually going in a curved direction. So this is going curved. where it's, I'm also letting, see how it's not blended all the way? I'm letting that kind of stay that way. This down here, this is like that metal piece on the bottom of the fireplace. So that is dark. So without rinsing my brush, I grabbed black and I'm doing left and right strokes in that piece. Um, it's a smaller area. If you want to switch to like that small number 12 brush, you can. So I actually made it just a bit lighter. The inside of the fireplace is going to be mostly black with the fire, of course. Um, so we want that piece to kind of stand out a little bit. So I made that kind of a dark gray instead of pure black. I'm going back in here, adding some more white. This up here is curved. We don't have to blend it all the way. We can just kind of loosely let it be blended. And then this over here gets kind of dark. Keep in mind that a lot of this in this area is going to be covered by feet. So we don't want to get super detailed only to have to end up covering it anyway. That's why I'm keeping it as simple as possible. The fireplace on the inside is mostly dark, although I am going to add a few kind of gray strokes in there. So we can be kind of expressive with this. See, I'm just kind of like scribbling my brush. I'm mostly letting it be pure black on the outer inner parts. So over here on the edge of the arc is pure black. 
on the sides also pure black. You can see how my direction of the stroke is going kind of vertical in this area and then kind of curved when we get to the arc. And in the center, it's like X style expressive strokes. So right here, I'm just kind of like scribbling my brush. And also I'm letting it be lighter in the middle because the fire would be making it look lighter in that area. Also a little bit of smoke potentially. So it's not exactly pure black. If you want to simplify things, you could just make it pure black. So darker on the outsides and adding more gray in the center part. Had a little bit of water into my brush to get that paint to kind of flow a little bit better. So grabbed some white on my brush and I'm just kind of scribbling that white in there. Kind of fun to paint that way. Just kind of flip-flopping your brush everywhere. <laughs> Letting that blend but not all the way. If it gets too light, you can always go back and add more black. Do you see how I added a whole bunch of white in there? So we have kind of brightness in the center part. So that'll look really pretty when we add the flame on there. This piece down here is pure black. So we have kind of a little slither of division between the table and the floor line. And we're going to go ahead and paint that solid black. I'm just going to use the tip of this brush and I'm just going to paint a horizontal stroke all the way across. I am making this just slightly thicker than it was actually drawn, and that's okay. If it ends up being too thick, we can always go back, adjust it when we paint the table next. Next, we're going to paint the table, and I'm going to load my palette with burnt sienna. And I'm not going to low, um, I'm not going to rinse my brush. So there is still a little bit of black on my brush and I'm painting the burnt sienna. We're going to do left and right full width strokes. And we want our table to be a little bit darker towards the bottom and a little bit lighter towards the top. So let's start by kind of letting the black in your brush and the burnt sienna kind of mixing together towards the bottom and letting that be dark. And then starting to just kind of add pure burnt sienna to your brush as you work your way up. Now, if you needed to rinse your brush, that's fine. Just add a teeny bit of black to your brush with the brown. Um, it's a really pretty reddish brown, so we're going for kind of like a reddish wood color. So as you work your way up to the top, go ahead and add a teeny tiny bit of white to your brush without rinsing. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. And then kind of blend that in. That is going to make a lighter wood color. And... Ideally, we want it to be a little bit lighter towards the top where that light from the fireplace would be hitting the table and it'd be a little bit darker towards the bottom where our legs are going to be and more shadowy towards the bottom. Um, but you don't have to blend it perfectly. So, so like right here, we want it lighter and that is going to really help that stand out from that black, that black line that we painted on the floor area. I'm adding a little bit of water to my brush just to kind of help spread things faster. Sometimes the paint's not spreading or it's drying too fast. So teeny tiny bit of water kind of helps boost that a little bit. You don't want to add too much water to your brush because then it'll start dripping down and that won't be very fun and the paint will be kind of uneven. So right here, um, and also adding that teeny bit of water helps get in those, those small areas. I'm using the very tip of the brush to really kind of cut in on that, although it doesn't have to be perfect. We're kind of painting this entire painting loosely. I'm going to add a teeny bit of black towards the bottom to make that kind of more shadowy. But see how I'm not blending it all the way? It's kind of unblended and leaving those dark and light streaks in there that's going to give it the illusion that it's a wooden table. We are going to paint the fire next and you just want to make sure all of the inside part of the fireplace is dry before doing this step. So we will need a number four round brush. 
cad orange hue and freshen up some titanium white. You'll also need yellow for this. So let's start with just the orange for now. And let's get our number four round brush. We don't have to load that in the water or anything. We just let it dry. Or if you loaded it in the water, that's fine too. Now let's start by just kind of sketching out our flame. Um, the way I like to do fire is start with kind of the darker colors. So that orange is kind of our darker color and it's kind of darker on the outer parts of the fire. Some of this I actually took my finger and just kind of smeared it to make it kind of that glow. So you do like a curve line and then kind of points, curves inwards, curve line, curve line. This part of the flame kind of curves and goes to a point. So once we kind of drew out the flame, we can start sort of filling it in, but I'm not going to fill this whole thing in solid orange. It's just the outer parts of this sketch-like curved kind of contouring strokes, but I'm leaving that center part blank right now. And that's going to be for other colors. So there's the orange part of our flame and let's load primary yellow onto our palette next. And you don't need to rinse the brush unless your brush is like really overloaded with orange. You can kind of wipe it off. But I'm going to take this yellow. Yellow is also a translucent color. Orange was a translucent color. So it's going to look kind of dull and not super bright yet. But it's going to start building brighter and brighter. Especially when we add white to this. So I'm taking this yellow and just kind of going back over some of the orange. But I don't want to cover up all the orange. But I'm also starting to fill in more of that center area. But still kind of leaving a lot of it kind of dark. A lot of the darkness still showing through. Curvy strokes that go to a point. With the fire, we want it to be much brighter in the center. And it's kind of a, a glowing sort of dull orange on the outer parts of it. Load titanium white onto your palette and wipe the brush off. Load white on the brush and start adding white just in the bottom and the center part. So I'm doing still kind of curvy strokes, but you can see what's happening. Our flame is starting to get bright. Center part of our flame is the brightest part of the fire. And I'm just adding that white in the center, but leaving that orange glow untouched on the very outside part. We can do a few kind of stray sort of wavy lines that go to a point. We don't want to lose that glowing orange color that we placed initially. So some of these are just curvy lines that go up little kind of you can do sparks. You can do like little dots, little kind of curvy lines and little dots, a lot of white in the center bottom area of the flame. That's really important. In fact, you're going to find that that area might be kind of too um, saturated with paint. So later on, we can go back with some more white after that dried and that will, after that dries, that will make it brighter when we add more white to the bottom area. So I'm just doing some very small kind of loose curvy strokes towards the top. I can add more yellow if I want. You don't want to overdo it, over blend it. This next step can be skipped if you want, but I wanted to do like a little log on the bottom of the flame. And to do that, I took the brown and let's take number four round brush. Let's add some white into our brown so that will lighten the brown to get it to show up. And just do like a little kind of curved line on each side and just kind of connect that. So this may not be visible, we got a little bit of black towards the bottom if we want. This may not be visible later on in the painting, especially if our feet are kind of covering that area. So that's why I didn't want to go in too much detail with that log, but I still wanted to um, kind of make it look like it wasn't just a floating fire either. Doing a few more little kind of orange pieces in there and kind of smearing that. I really like how that orange glow looks. And if you want to add more, you can. So this is pretty much it for 
this part, so this is like part one of the painting, the background, um, you want everything to dry before the next step. The next step is drying the feet. So I'm going to draw the feet with a piece of chalk. There is a template for this if you want to use the template. The feet drying is a little bit awkward because it's a weird perspective, kind of a, a challenging perspective. I'll put it that way. Um, but I'm going to start by sketching out the end of this person's pajama pants. And they're like two little kind of, or two kind of medium sized curved lines. And then they go down at an angle towards the edge of the canvas. So there's the edge of our pants. And I'm going to do the feet. So we want to make our foot kind of big so it covers up like the bottom half of the fireplace and yours will look pretty awkward at first like this and what we can do is just keep sketching it until we form the shape that we want so this is our left toe so that one is going to be kind of higher and this one's our right toe it kind of goes angles downwards So it angles up and down. See how it angles down right here for our other toes. If you want to change the shape of the foot, you can. And then down. So that one turned out all right. It goes down and kind of curves a little bit at the bottom. Just keep sketching it until you get the shape that you want. It will look awkward the first shape that you draw, but just keep adjusting it until you get your foot shape. If you have a baby wipe or a soft wet towelet, it's super handy to have because then you can erase your excess chalk marks, just very gently erase, and that'll kind of clean your drying up a little bit. Our pant legs have to be a little bit wider than the feet. Goes down angles towards the bottom right. So I'm just going back over my drawing multiple times until I achieve the shape that I want. We can definitely adjust this when we paint it in. So erase. You just want to be careful as you're erasing not to press too hard with the baby wipe because you don't want to lift any of the paint off. Then I'm going to do the feet on the left. If you want to add more feet in this painting, you're welcome to. Or if you only want one pair of feet, and you want to do like a coffee cup on the table. That would be a fun way to kind of change this painting up a little bit. So th these feet, I am making them just slightly smaller, but they're at a different angle. So I started with the feet this time and not the pant legs. So I'm going to draw these at an angle. Also, the toes are in the inside part, so that part angles up a little bit higher and then it kind of angles down the smaller toes. And you're just again drawing and drawing and sketching until you achieve the shape that you want. And then we can draw the ends of our pajama legs for here. So those angle downwards. Assuming these are very long pants and we don't see any of the angle part of the socks. If you want, you can make these blankets instead of pants. So I'm kind of adjusting this foot. This one was a little bit more challenging to draw because it's at a, a kind of a harder angle versus the, the feet on the right. We kind of kind of more forward direct view of them. These ones are more going at an angle. I found it helpful to put socks on my feet when I was doing this. I was kind of sketching this idea out and just kind of looking at the, the angle of the foot, how that would look drawn out from the perspective that we're viewing our feet at. Um, if you want to change the angle of your feet, like if you want them to overlap or not be close together, kind of spread apart, that is something you can adjust as well. So just keep 
adjusting your chalk drawing, use your baby wipe and erase as needed until you have a more refined drawing. And when you're ready, you can start painting this in. So really quick, I'm actually gonna touch up my fire a little bit, adding some more orange in my flame. And then a little bit of white towards the bottom that ended up blending with orange a little bit too much. So later on, I'll go back and add some more pops of white down there. Um, do as I say, not as I do. Don't go crazy with your flame. It's super tempting to just keep kind of blending your flame color together, but eventually you just don't want it to all blend together. You want it to be super bright in the middle and not so bright in the outer parts. So later on, I'm gonna to have to add more white down there because it's too wet to do that. So let's start painting socks and pants in. I'm actually gonna start uh, with the green pants on the right, and then I'll do the blue pants on the left. So this is Hooker's Green Hue Permanent for the green pants on the right, and then Thalo Blue for the green pants on the left. And I'm using a 12 bright brush. You'll also need titanium white for the highlighting, and we'll use Mars Black for the shading. Start by loading your 12 bright in just the green or whatever color you're gonna do your pants. And the trick with these pants is to make sure you're doing curved strokes. So that's going to make it look 3D and not flat just by making your strokes go in a curved direction. We're gonna set the groundwork for this and make the pants look like they're on three-dimensional legs. So see how curve, curve? Green is a, um, it's not gonna show up super bright, especially in this area where it's dark. Without rinsing your brush, add a little bit of white to it, and look how fast that spreads. So you wanna just do white in the center, but leave the outer parts dark. So with light on top, dark here on the sides. So I'm adding more of the green, the darker green right there, and kind of blending it inside but the very top curve part is brighter that is also going to help you create the illusion of three-dimensional pants and then we're going to repeat the same thing we are going to rinse the brush and go with the blue or whatever color you're going to do for the pants on the left so load your 12 bright brush in the blue and i'll slow this down so you can see how we do it we're going to do the same thing again curved strokes See how it's curving kind of at a different angle because of the way we drew our pants. So you wanna curve yours at the same angle that yours were drawn in. So load my brush in more blue. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So curved, and this is just gonna go off the canvas. See how I kind of left that center line that divides both pants? I left that kind of blank. You can still see table line, but it's also dark right there in the center. Load a teeny tiny bit of white on your brush and do curved. You only need a very, very small amount of white to make this work. And just do curves in the center part, but leave it dark on where that center line is and dark on the edges. I'm gonna load my brush in just blue right here and kind of go back over this dark part. Try to kind of blend it with that white, but try not to over blend it. And then right there on the edge of the pant legs. And then I'm gonna grab some Mars Blacks so without rinsing the brush. Actually, let's go ahead and rinse the brush because if there's still white on this, this might be kind of messy. It might be turning gray if there's still white on the brush. Let's rinse, dry. And I'm grabbing black on my palette right here. All right here, that line down the middle of the pant legs, I did use the tip of the brush to kind of outline that line again and just kind of dragged that paint a little bit. So same with the green pants, outline that center line and just very, very lightly do your darker sort of shadows on the outer parts of the legs. Um, you're just barely letting that brush kind of skid the surface of the canvas there. If you press too hard, you're gonna uh, introduce too much black in there and it's gonna get kind of messy. So just a very, very little bit of black for the shadowing on the end part of the legs and on the outer sides of the legs. The next thing we're going to do is paint the socks. So regardless what, uh, what color you're gonna be painting the socks or how you're gonna be designing them, I highly recommend painting the first layer white and that's just to make sure everything 
behind them. It has good coverage. You don't want to have any of the fire showing through the feet or the table color. So I'm going to use the 12 Bright Brush in Titanium White and I'm going to paint the feet. So I found it helpful to kind of use the tip of the brush to kind of outline the shape of the foot first and then fill it in. Just kind of take your time. You may find that you're kind of adjusting your drawing a bit as you're painting this in. So as you start painting the center part of the sock, you want to do curved direction, so just like how we did the pants. So right here, you want to make sure that your strokes are going curved. And that's going to give the feet a little bit more depth and make them look not so flat when you curve them. So see how I'm taking the brush, using the width of the brush to curve the center part. And even though it's solid white, it's still kind of important to make sure your strokes are going in that direction. So again, outlining the sock shape. And then curving the inner part. And with this first layer of white paint, you shouldn't see any color showing through. If there's still some color from the fireplace or table still showing through, you may want to do a second coat, um, especially if you're going to do what I do. I'm going to leave the socks white, but then add color patterns to it. If you're doing the socks a different color, you only need one coat of white. And then, so for example, if you're going to do blue socks, like solid blue, you would paint it white first and then go back and paint it blue. And by that time, there shouldn't be any color still showing through. So see how these are curving right here? That's going to give your feet a little bit more form. There's a, there's a gap. You can still see the little bit of a gap between the feet. So you want to kind of leave that gap visible. But if there's no gap, that's also fine too. You can also do like a dark line between the feet to kind of distinguish them from each other. But when we do the patterns, they will also look separate that way too. Doing kind of a second coat, you just want to make sure, like I said, nothing's showing through. Then you want to do the same thing for the other pair of feet using the titanium white and the 12 bright brush and painting it so that the middle part is going in a curved direction, but also you can use the tip of the brush, the smaller um, line of that stroke by using just the tip to outline the outer part of the feet or the, the edging of it. So we can still see some of the table line on the bottom part of the fireplace through the socks, especially the ones on the left. Um, we could go add a second coat to it. In fact, if that's what you want to do, you can. Um, when we do the patterns, it won't be as noticeable. Or if you're painting your socks a solid color it also won't be a noticeable at that point. So I'm gonna do patterns on both of the socks. The sock on the right 
or actually the sock on the left is going to have red patterns on it. So this is Pyrol Red. You don't have to use this exact red. You can use any red. You can also change the color. So I'm starting by doing the toes, part of the sock, and just solid red right now. I am going to highlight or blend some white into this as well. In fact, some of this white from the first layer isn't dry and that's already blending with it and that is fine. I kind of want that to happen. But if it's not happening for you, you can get a little bit of white and blend it. So grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and just take this and just kind of drag it in on one side of the sock. So I did it on the right side. You can do it on both sides if you want. Um, we are going to add dark shadowing into this later as well. But also um, keep in mind, just like how we painted those sock white and we made that go in a curved direction, as you are doing these patterns, you want to make sure, so see right here, it's going in a curved direction. So outlining is fine and then filling it in curved and that's going to give your sock more dimension and make it look not so flat. So take a little bit of white and blend that in on the big toe area and kind of blend that in with the red. We don't have to blend it in all the way. A little bit over here as well. So we have some really pretty color variation with this red. So if you wanted to do solid, you can do solid, but I did some patterns. I'm going to do dots and stripes and waves and we can do snowflakes. We can do um, snowmen or anything you want to get creative. You can make mismatched socks. That would be kind of fun. I decided to match mine. So see this curve? It's a stripe, but it's going in a curved direction. Same with this one. That is going to really help your socks look more three-dimensional and not so flat. So we're gonna do the same thing pretty much on both sides of the sock. So this one is also going to get two lines. So if you want, you can do one sock and then the other, or you can do both socks at the same time. So I'm doing like a few patterns on one and then going to the other one and doing the same thing again. And then we can do squiggle lines on this one. Um, these ones are kind of hard. We still want to make it look like they're going curved. So see, I did the squiggle lines, but they're also going in an arced kind of direction. And then right here as well. And then another line. So we can vary the thicknesses of this line. So this one I'm actually going to make a little bit thicker. So to do that, you want to just press more, put more pressure on the brush and that makes your stroke much, much thicker. Um, for the thinner lines, you're holding really light pressure on the brush to make thinner lines. And so these ones are also going in a curved direction. And then I'm going to do little plus signs below the feet, below the thicker line. Feel free to change the pattern up. I know that I've said this already. Lots of customization can happen with these socks. And then another thin line. We can do potentially two more thin lines. And then this one as well, also going in a curved direction. So the patterns look good as they are. If you want to simplify this painting, you don't have to go back and highlight the patterns. But if you do want to go back and highlight the patterns, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to um, grab the white without rinsing. So just like how we highlighted the toe area, I'm just going to go in and um, do this mostly on like the thicker parts of the designs. So the taking that titanium white and just adding the little bit of light just in the center part, but also kind of curving it and letting that blend a little bit with the red, but not letting it blend all the way. It gives it more highlight, more dimension. And then I'm gonna show you how to do patterns on the pajama pants. If you wanna do patterns on those, I'm gonna rinse 
and grab titanium white. I'm going to do little white little stars on the blue pants. They could also be snowflakes. So I'm just doing little star lines with the brush. This could also be done with a much smaller brush if needed. You're also welcome to add different colors, but I decided to kind of keep the pajama pants a little bit simplified and just do the white. And I'm not going to highlight all those stars. It, it's good as it is. There's enough highlight and shadowing going on with the, the fabric piece that it's not super necessary to go back and highlight the stars too. So before I start doing the patterns on the other pair of socks, I am going to add a little bit of white to my fire. So you remember earlier, I added more orange in there and kind of covered, ended up covering some of the bright white. So I'm going to go back now that the fire is dry. I'm going to go back with the white and just add white right there on the bottom. And that is going to make that fire look extra bright right in the center. So I'm just adding like a little white flame right in the center of that. So if you wanted to touch that up, you can. But remember what I said earlier, don't overdo your fire because it'll end up blending too much together. I'm going to next add some shadowing on the red socks on the left. This is a step that you can skip if you're simplifying this painting. So I'm just going to add black to my brush. I'm actually going to add just a little bit of water in there. Sorry for the shaky camera just now. Um, but just to kind of loosen that black up a bit. But right here in between the feet, did just a little bit of outlining and then kind of shadowy. See, I'm just kind of like loosely outlining that, that center part and then dragging my brush in a curved direction kind of on the sides, both sides. So I did a little bit of shadowing over here on the left side of the feet, a little bit of loose outlining on the far left of the foot, and then a little bit of shadow. Um, so when you're doing the dark, you're just barely letting that dark kind of skid the canvas um, just so it looks kind of a little bit lighter and not super dark. So this just adds some darkness into the socks. If you don't like that look, you can absolutely skip that step. And then let's start doing the patterns on the socks on the right. So for those socks, I used blue for the pattern and I actually mixed white with phthalo blue just to kind of lighten the blue up a bit, make it look a little bit um, different than the blue in the pants on the left. So mixing about equal parts white with phthalo blue, that'll lighten that blue up. And then for the pattern, I did almost identical, um, an almost identical pattern as the socks on the left. Um, if you want, you can change that up if, if you want to make them look a little bit different, but I was trying to go for a matching look with these socks. And so same exact technique, starting with the toes, um, kind of outlining the area that you want to fill in. And then when you're filling it in, make sure you're going in a curved direction. And that curved direction is going to help give your socks a little bit more form. Adding a little bit of white in there. So right there, I added a little bit of white as I blended that in and just kind of let the white and blue blend together, but kind of not all the way. That gives a little bit of highlight in that area, but we can always so also go back and add more highlight to those socks and then continue down and do the patterns using the same technique that we just did with the red socks.
So before this blue dries all the way, I'm going to go back and highlight. So the same way I highlighted the red socks, I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. So grabbing white without rinsing the brush and just doing kind of curvy strokes in there. Kind of blend them in a little bit, but not all the way. And just on the, the bigger pattern parts, so some of the thicker lines can get some highlight. Then I'm going to rinse and do a little bit of the black outlining like what it, I did with the red socks. So rinse and load the brush. This is still the number four brown brush, by the way. Load the brush with the black and a little bit of outline right here on the end of the pajama pants. Then a little bit of outlining between both of the socks. And then over here, a little bit of shadowing. A little bit of shadowing, just kind of dragging the brush from the end and inwards. If we need to go back and add a little bit more blue to help blend that in, we can. And add a little bit of shadowing down here. Um, again, holding that brush lightly with that black so that the black doesn't take over too much. So here I'm adding shadowing in the black and that white is definitely dry. So it's not blending with the black. So in order to get that kind of shadow effect, um, you would do it like a dry brush style. So you're only doing a little bit of paint and just barely letting that skid the canvas. And that still kind of makes it look dry brush, but without it turning like super opaque. I'm going to add a plaid pattern on the green pants next. So I'm going to rinse and then use the titanium white to do this. So still using the number four round brush, grab titanium white, and I'm going to do, make sure these are going in a curved direction. But these ones, the vertical lines, we're just going to kind of wing it with these lines. They're mostly going vertical, although some are going kind of slanted. And I kind of just loosely did these. So the vertical lines were just very loose, not like consistent lines. And then these ones are going curved. And these ones, these curved ones are thicker. So it kind of gives it that plaid effect with the horizontal ones going thicker and the vertical ones going thinner. If you want to detail these up a little bit further by doing some more detailed plaid, you are welcome to do that and see how I did this very loosely. A little bit of outline over here on the left. If you have any leftover chalk lines, um, you can start gently erasing them. You just want to make sure not to smear any wet paint. So this really kind of cleans it up a bit if there's some chalk lines still showing through. Again, just be really careful or wait until it's dry. Sometimes I get super impatient and want to clean it up before it dries and then I end up smearing the paint. What I am doing here is I'm adding some texture to the table, um, especially towards the ends. So the light up from the fire would be hitting kind of up here, but then it would be a little bit more darker and shadowy towards the bottom. But adding some texture on the table. So with titanium white, just to loosely like horizontal lines and if just one little like knot line and then closer to the bottom we have more of a black uh, shadowy area and then maybe we could bring some of that white down here towards the bottom but for the most part it needs to be very dark I did a little bit of texture on the left and the right of the table area and next thing I'm going to do is detail the mantle area of the fireplace. So we have some Christmas greenery hanging on that area with some yellow lights and red berries. Um, really quick, I'm going to outline a little bit on the left and the right vertical lines of the fireplace and I'll show you. So I'm gonna get some fresh Mars black and we'll be using that Mars black in some of the greenery as well. So just taking my round brush and very loosely outlining this as well as this one. And by loosely, you can see how that line is just kind of barely skidding the canvas, not even like a continuous thick line at all, but that kind of helps 
define that fireplace area. I'm going to load my palette with some fresh Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and I'm still going to leave that black on my brush. So if you didn't do the outlining, add a little bit of black into this green so this first layer is nice and dark. And I'm just painting little green lines that are hanging down off the mantle of the fireplace. We don't really see the mantle on this painting and most of it's going to be kind of covered by this greenery anyway. That's why we didn't paint a detailed mantle for this. And we're just kind of dragging this green down. It's almost like you're painting grass blades up here. Just kind of painting green lines that are just going in different angles. If it helps, you can think X, little X's. So you can do little cross hatching paint strokes that'll really help create the texture of this green garland. So over on the left and the right of the garland, the green is actually hanging down a little bit more. See how those green strokes are a little bit longer and the part of the garland that's directly over the fireplace, those strokes are uh, much shorter. And to layer this, we're going to go back and add white to it. So I'm going to add some fresh titanium white to my palette and that color. Um, I didn't rinse my brush off, so I just grabbed the white and I'm just going back over this with a second layer. If it's too strong, you can so grab some more green on your brush. So if it's too light, um, that's not going to be good for contrast since the fireplace is light. So don't make it too light. But adding that lighter green on top of the darker green is going to give your garland some more texture and some pretty color variation. So you're just going back over it. You're not covering all the green. So leave a lot of green still showing through. You can create some more green if we need to. And just keep adding it until you have as full of a garland as you want. We go back with some more of this darker green. Next, let's rinse and add some berries to our garland. So just the red that's on our palette, I'm gonna paint little red dots throughout this. It should be okay to paint this over any of the, it wouldn't go over thick, wet green areas, but some of the areas that are almost dry or some open spots, it should be fine to do little red dots without it kind of smearing too much. For the lights, you definitely let need to let this dry completely before doing the lights. Um, so come back and do this step or get like a hair dryer and dry it real quick. So mine is dry now. And let's do yellow and white. So on your palette, Primary yellow and titanium white. Mix both of those colors together. Take your number four round brush and paint a little dot and then use your finger to smear the dot. That is going to create a blurry circle. If you smear it and it like really isn't showing up that much, paint another layer and then smear that and that'll show up. So you wanna create a bunch of blurry yellow circles throughout your garland. So I'm not doing any of these over any of the red berries, but they are definitely overlapping parts of the green. You can do as many as you want. And then after this kind of dries a bit, we're going to go back and add a bright white circle in the very center of these blurry yellow dots. And it's going to make it look like they are glowing lights. So let's rinse and dry, grab just titanium white on the tip of your brush. And what you need to do is add just a white dot in the center of all of those. And that is what we do to get, well, that's what I do to make glowing lights. Um, if you don't like, so like what we can do is actually smear that white dot. So that's taking it a step further and that's gonna make it really bright. So I'm smearing the white dot, but I'm not letting that white cover that yellow all the way. So there's kind of like a blurry white circle inside of the blurry yellow circle. And then finally, there's a bright white dot in the very center of that. So that'll make it look like it's really bright and glowing. 
If you decided you wanted to do color lights, you would essentially do the same thing, only instead of the, making a blurry yellow dot, you would make a blurry color dot. So like blue, red, yellow, green, and then um, do your white the same way that you're doing this. And that's how you would do colored lights. And that is it, my friends. This is the conclusion of how to paint fireplace besties. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me. Mm -hmm.